praise God as I rock the mic. Say what? I praise God as I rock the mic. Come on. I praise God as I rock the mic. What's up, family? What's it to which it is pitiful? Blackness is critical. Divine and our race and mine. Not political. I'm strong with force. To keep us so cool. Using the pyramid builders as my main source. Our children will guide us. We're ignorance behind us. We're moving the same death. What's half blind? So up to the crossroad. Street for my black hole. Communal with brothers. Street for my Mac code. I step in the dark. The mic is my ride. Help me to raise the black children. They go from the pride. I can tell you how it's up. Exit and shimmer tap. Now that you know what's up. Make sure you watch your step. I rise with the sun. It's a new day begun. I will still walk on my path. It's no different one. I'm looking for unity. Not for no casualty. But working together. We step for humanity. I want what was given. I'm far beyond seven. Because I know I realize. I see the two gates of heaven. Black woman, I love you. Black sister, respect the thee. We sit down and to yourself. Save our community. A labor is on our side. I love what bless is right. Why we rise with you? Jah will not criticize. Jesus will bless thee. It's part of the prophecy. Look deep into your soul. Truth will set you free. The end is a full of faith. Don't be a fool, back. Hope your perfections are formed into a spirit check. I praise God. I praise God as I rock the mic. Come on. I praise God as I rock the mic. Say what? I praise God as I rock the mic. Come on. I praise God as I rock the mic. I'm going inside to take a look. And all the sense I couldn't see in the book. Who are on this planet in a mortal mind state? Mississippi lies as a 348. Communication with the skill to build. Power to the fighters as I direct my will. To save my people on the planet Earth. I got to go to the underground first. Listening to my elders as I reach my youth. Speaking to elders as I speak the truth. Following the order that's ordained by God. With my hands, my antenna, and my mic is my rod. Right, so we're gonna get into these pro proverbs, you know, because I was like, ah, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late, but hell with that. I got home because um, um, I, I, I posted the video, said I was gonna do it, and I did that before, then I would come home, I'm tired, and I said, well, shit, I owe it to my family to get on here and at least attempt to do the show. But I know as soon as I step up in front of here, I'm always, I'm always always energized so a couple of announcements first for those that want the shirt like i said we will start pushing off the shirt uh good quality let's see who made you know okay all right good quality shirt you know i think i might go and shoot for a better quality but the back the first the begin the the front side says daily hashtag Daily Toaster. Hashtag Daily Toaster. On the back, it describes what we do. Daily Toast is where we 
gather daily to remember those upon whose shoulders we directly stand. Right? Family, you know, right? we, we building a movement of individuals that's pulling libations that have similar visions. We building our tribe. What also that comes with that is this because the price of the individual shirts when I'm printing them is expensive because I'm going through um, I'm going through one of us. I'm practicing Ujum. I'm going through one of us. So the brother is charging, so I'm gonna have to charge. So I'm throwing in the book as well to kind of balance it out. Profit margin is very small, but one is get the stuff out there. And I imagine if we get enough, if I get enough orders, once I put it online to get it, the price will come down. You know what I'm saying? But right now, um, and now this book right here is called Seven Sticks. This is the secrets of the millenniums. Millennium 7 is a little book that I put together. Um, it has a story, it has some stories I created, it has some um, um, other stories that I picked up and I changed for it. And each story is identified by a principle. So you have folk tales, you have principles, you have proverbs in here. You got a lot of good stuff going on in here. It's about a man and his family. And well, let me read it. This tale is of a mysterious old man who has called seven children together to decide which of them will inherit his fortune when he dies. He challenged them to demonstrate their worthiness by sharing the wisdom they gain from listening to him. Um, uh, listening, listen to. It's messed up on the back, so I can't remember, and I can't remember what I wrote. He challenged them to demonstrate their worthiness by sharing the wisdom they gained from the uh, tales he shared with them when they were children. Which of the seven will earn the old man's fortune and ultimately learn the secret of his success? I'm not, uh, and of course, of course, family, I'm going to sign it. You know what I'm saying? And it has pictures that have been drawn by some of the young people. Um, at, at the school because basically what happened I had an opportunity to go through the school and share the stories because with with the culture building even though I, I don't have time to do it in, within the last few years this book is maybe about five five years old I go back I let you know how old it is but the whole idea was to start developing stories for the school so I would take stories that was already out there I would take uh, motifs or models that was already out there and use them to teach the kids about the principles. But of course, as I always say, folk, these folk tales ain't always for kids, right? Because in all of them, each principle is represented. Each one of our seven principles is represented in the book, the good book. You know what I'm saying? I like it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking about even throwing um, a link to where I read the book because I read the book because I wanted my kids to, to hear it. So I used to play it for Gina and Sasha till they got old enough to be like, Daddy, I don't want to hear that story no more. I don't want to hear those stories no more. You know what I'm saying? Because it's about two hours. Um, we are on, oh, also in the news, Bill Cosby, Brother Bill Cosby. Sister Tracy, you, you are you there? Can you hear me? I guess you can hear me. Uh-oh. I don't know what's going on. Check one, check two. Let me make sure she can hear me. Uh, oh, you can hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, you got something you want to share with the family? No. I, I ain't understand what she said, but we're going to get started. So let's go and get it started because we know we got to... Uh, I put the wrong... Oh, yeah. That's, okay, cool, cool, cool. Day 26. Bill Cosby, yeah, oh my God. Did y'all hear about Bill Cosby? Oh my God. Oh, my fault. Shouts out to Sister Jackie. I see you up. I see you on there. Right? Hey. So, for those that don't know, Bill Cosby lost the trial and they about to go on. They about to stick it to him. But the issue was, now one of the things that caught me was in one of the radio broadcasts I heard, they said that they wanted Bill Cosby to be taken straight from the courtroom, straight to jail, right? 
And they said he's a flight risk. You're like, Bill Cosby a flight risk. Why is he a flight risk? Your Honor, Bill Cosby has a private jet and he can fly up out of here at any given time. And Bill Cosby stood up and said, I don't have a private jet, you asshole. And, and one of the things I'm wondering is how much money has Bill lost in the process of all this stuff going on? Did they not only, you know, did they not only find him guilty, but was he broken in the process as far as financially? I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm mean, like, wow. You know, it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's a sad day. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I mean, Bill Cosby, 60s, 70s. You know what I'm saying? I spy. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't old enough to watch it back then, but I seen the rerun. Uh, uh, Bill Cosby and and um, Fat Albert. Cosby's. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like in all the shows that spent off of that and then all the shows where he came back. You know what I'm saying? You remember when he came back with uh, Felicia Rashad with another show and it wasn't the Cosby's and it was kind of confusion because you like... I'm young, I'm, you know, not, I'm young, I'm like, damn, is this the Cosby's, or, I, you know, they try to get the chemistry back, and, you know, but sometimes you gotta let stuff go, so, Bill Cosby, um, I was thinking about something else, so, um, today, in France, uh, a young man won a baking contest, and he gets to provide um, the bread for the French president, right? I'm going to read what Jackie said and I'll come back to that. They set themselves up financially. They ain't hurting for cash, but he's lost two of his seeds. He is not mentally healthy enough to withstand jail. He is already destroyed spiritually behind his his loss. Man, who you telling? You know, make it all the way through your life at 80 and now you looking at some time. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, like you said, he, I mean, daughter, I mean, his son, and you know what I'm saying? It's like, wow, his legacy, you know, because a lot of times, a lot of us, we don't, we don't appreciate the legacy until, till the end is knocking. And I'm trying to wake us up so we can start understanding that we have to start building our legacy now. You know what I'm saying? And we got to start living our life as if our legacy depends on it, which it does. You know what I'm saying? It's a very serious thing. Well, anyway, I was riding home and um, was listening about this baker who won a prize over in France and he gets to provi provide the bread for the French president. And one of the things they was talking about was that for the last six years, out of the last six years, four of the bakers that have won it come from North Africa. And they can't understand why. But let me tell you why. Right? I want y'all to think about this. There was an old Twilight movie, an old Twilight Zone called The Eye of the Beholder. I don't know if anybody else was a Twilight Zone fan. I, I you know, uh, Rod, uh, Rod Serling was, you know, he was cold with, he was cold with that pen, right? So, um, in The Eye of the Beholder, it was a story about a girl who had her face bandaged almost the whole movie and she was just hoping that her face would be normal. Her face would be normal because if her face was not normal, they was going to send her to a colony. So the whole show, the whole show, she sat around wondering what her face was gonna look like because they did a surgery and her face needed to heal. So when they started taking off the bandages, they started taking the bandages off this girl's face. And, of course, it was a white girl. And, you know, they took the bandages off. And she was, you know, if you was watching a normal-looking white girl. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't a bad-looking white girl. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at her like, wow. But then all of a sudden, in the background, I hear somebody scream. She's hideous. Oh! You're like, damn. What's going on here? And then they turn the cameras around. And you got these individuals with these twisted faces. And these pig-like noses, and they looking 
very, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, so she pick up the mirror and she starts screaming. I think she broke the mirror and, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, wow, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? What the hell is going on here? But the name of the show was In the Eye of the Beholder. And In the Eye of the Beholder is beauty. Now, back to the French story. What we have is people try to fit into the West Asian culture so much that they become better at the culture than the West Asians. And we have that over here as well. Because we're trying to live up or we have allowed somebody else to be the beholder. So our children are doing things, our, our women are doing things, our men are doing things to out-westernize the Westerners. So, of course, the best French bakers are going to come from outside of French, France from Tunisia and from other North African countries that have been colonized by France. Of course, some of the best scholars come up out of different countries. They, they're better at knowing how to operate in the Western system because they're driving to be part of it more. And, you know, and, and, it's, and it's sort of like us. We take the bandage off and we look and we see our face and we be like, oh, my God, no, no. No. It's hideous. When and that's because the eye of the beholder is being held by those that would oppress us. And we have to switch. We have to switch that whole piece. So my speaker station might be going out soon because I'm running. Camilla finally let Bill go. Oh, she left damn. Yeah, Bill, hey, Bill, hey, Jackie, Bill might not be set up. Man, who you talking about? I mean, she, well, she might not be nothing left for her to take. He might just let go and take it all. Shit, I'm going to jail. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn. Ooh. All right. So let's get into these, folks. Let's get into these uh, pro uh, proverbs. My fault. You are now listening to Giami Journey media anime get it together <sighs> this is a heart of a similar production <laughs> where we strive to blow up your old paradigm <laughs> Christine says, I feel more for Camille than anyone in this anyone in this whole situation. Camille went to court with him today. She ain't going nowhere. Uh-oh. Miss Jackie says she ain't going nowhere. Uh-oh. We're gonna see. But time will tell. Time will tell. Alright. So um proverb number one. Anybody want to join in? Let me know. The number is 614-556-4535. Miss Jackie, can you put that up for me, please? Because I can't get on my hoot suite for some reason because it's, it's slow. If his ass goes to jail, who gets the purse? So does that make you Ike? No, it don't make me Ike. I just like the name Anime since she does do my singing for me. Anime, hit it. Hit that high note for me, girl. Bring it from here. All she needs is a little bit of encouragement. You understand what I'm saying? No, I'm not Ike. <laughs> Jackie, the number is 614-556-4535. That's 614-556-4535. Lines are open. For anybody who want to join the conversation, we're going to do this real quick so that we can, uh, you know, I got to lay it down. Got a busy day tomorrow. You know, it's a Nia and the kids, the spring fever. And we got middle schoolers, so it's mating season. You know what I'm saying? It's mating season, and Lord knows. Oh, you pinned it already. Thank you, Jackie. All right. Calvin Coolidge, those who trust the chance must abide by the results of chance. 
Those who trust to chance must abide by the results of chance. Number two for today. There is nothing like a dream to create the future. That's Victor Hugo. Once again, there is nothing like a dream to create the future. Victor Hugo. And the last one, poor people entertain with their heart. That's from Haiti. Poor people entertain with the heart from our cousins in Haiti. All right. So, if somebody would, give me a number from in between one and three. One and three. Miss Tracy, you on the line. Go on, pick. Pick before somebody uh, eat the cake anime. Two. Two. Okay. There's nothing like a dream to create the future. Uh oh, Miss Heather. Oh, Miss Heather in the house. What's up? What's up? You know, I didn't know that Brother Devin was coming down there because if Devin was coming down there, I would have sent you. This, if I'd have known he was coming out, I would have sent to Scoby. But I got you. I got you. Now, some of these Scobies is going to be kind of looking kind of. They ain't going to be perfectly round because I'm going to have to cut some of them out. But all you got to do is put it in there, let it do its work, and eventually you will get around. Trust me. All right, let me take a sip, man. Speaking of that. Oh, it's aging. Nice. Mm-hmm. A new team. Yeah. All right. There's nothing like a dream to create the future. There is nothing like a dream to create the future. He didn't make it over... What? I don't, I, I thought he, okay, all right. Wow. There's nothing like a dream to create the future. Here we go. You want, you want to, you want to hit that one, uh, Miss Tracy, or you want me to go? Yep. You say go? Okay, I guess you want me to go. Okay. All right. So, all right, we talk about the future every day, right? And according to Victor Hugo, in order to develop that, we have to be able to create that, right? And not only do we have to be able to, because it's like a lot of us, we get caught up with the dream part. There's nothing like a dream to create the future. And, of course, dreaming is a powerful thing, right? Because oftentimes, many of us, let me speak for myself, I'm rehashing a lot of past issues in my dreams, so I'm still, I'm not fighting as much in my sleep as I used to, right? But, sometime from the dreams that I get or the visions that I get, it sparks me. Right, because in the dream you get to see how beautiful something is or how beautiful something can be, and it should move you to action to bring it to fruition. You understand what I'm saying? So a dream is that initial spark. Now there's other parts because remember we talk about the intuition, the mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. All of them gotta come together in order for us. To make that fist so that we can knock oppression in the mouth. To make that fist so that we can push our dreams through. To make that fist. You know what I'm saying? We need all five fingers to be able to grab. So mm -hmm. dreaming is an intuitional thing. Dreaming is an intuitional thing. Let me say that again. Dreaming is an intuitional thing. But the intuition without the mental is nothing. Intuition without the emotion. It's no fire. It's nothing to drive. And intuition without um, the spirit is empty. Intuition without the body, it just won't happen. So the dream is a uh, inspire. In, in, you know what I'm saying? That 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 is 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 that intuition, and it and it and it can it can inspire you, but it has to move all the parts of you in order to get you to start doing something. So there's nothing like a dream to create the future. So now. In order for us to have the future that we want, family, we got to start dreaming about it. Let me say this to you. 
a precious part of our time is spent sleeping. And a part of that sleeping period is the REM sleep where we go into dream mode. Now, one of the things that some we we all have to start working on if you don't have if you don't have it mastered, I'm still I've been working on it for years, but being able to control our dreams. Now this, this and this is why I'm saying this, right? Because nation building is a 24 hour process. 24 hour process. So it's, it, as crazy as it might might sound sound, some of us are going to have to start going to sleep dreaming about what it is we want to make, what it is we want to create, what legacy we want to leave. You understand what I'm saying? Taking control of that dream time and then also using the inspiration that comes from that dream, the excitement that comes from the dream because during our dreams, we feel all our emotions. Some of us can have dreams that make us feel joyful. Some of us can have dreams that we could wake up crying, we could wake up scared. You know what I'm saying? So if the if a dream can move you to where you actually feel emotions, even though in all in all likelihoods you might even realize that the dream wasn't real, but while you in the dream, it appears to be real. It can move you to action. So there's nothing like a dream to uh, um, like a dream to create the future, and we got to start using some of our dream time to start building and start thinking and start creating the future that we have. Because a lot of us, we will build something up, but because we ha we we don't feel it belongs to us, because we don't feel comfortable, we will we will start sabotaging it. Some of us done did that. We'll be in something that feels so good. You understand what I'm saying? It feels so good that we don't that 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 it um uh, it I forgot I forgot I lost my train of thought. I'm, I'm buffering, I'm tired, but that's cool. We we dream and it becomes so real to us that we want to bring it to fruition. We allow the dreams to move us. You know what I'm saying? And it's like we fire up our whole being behind the dream. Okay? So when it's when when they're talking about there's nothing like a dream to create the future, then we need, you know what I'm saying? We need to start learning how to dream about what we want rather than what we don't want. That reticular formation I keep on telling y'all about. In our dreams, we fall back to our survival mode. A lot of us, and we're not in our creation mode, we're in survival mode. So we fall into our dreams, and a lot of times we are struggling. Let me speak for myself. I'm struggling. I don't know about y'all. Maybe some of y'all got it locked down to where you can control exactly what it is you dream about. And you are able to motivate and push yourself. But now, I'm saying as a group, we need to start learning how to dream about what we want in our reality, what we want in our life. Damn. Damn. 